Hey guys, it's Levi again. We are doing another unboxing video today, and today we're opening the Explore Scientific ED102 uh, Carbon Fiber APO Triplet Refracting Telescope. Um, that's kind of a mouthful, but this is the carbon fiber version, so it's going to be a little lighter than the full aluminum version. And um, yeah, we're going to get right into it. I ordered mine from High Point Scientific online. Um, they were doing a deal at the time, and I got a pretty good deal on it, so pretty excited about this. Um, I did already open this, you're going to notice, um, but I still have all the original contents and most of the packaging, so we're going to get right into it here and not waste any more time. So um, when you get the package, you're going to find that it comes in this white, big white box, the, the main telescope, and there's going to be a little white box, um, same height that kind of comes with it. And inside of that, you're going to find this two inch star diagonal um, piece here that you can connect into the telescope and that kind of gives you just a better uh, viewing angle so you don't have to look through the base of the telescope and that's going to come like I said in the white little box that comes with this main box and attached to that you'll find a nice little cap here on that and then you'll also see that there is the 2 inch to 1.25 inch um, adapter here and you can see that by just loosening these rings here I can pull that off and there we go, we have our full two inch um, viewing angle there now. Um, we can pull this off as well, and you can see that. So, um, this is gonna go into the, and be collapsed on from the bottom of the refraction telescope, and then you're gonna put your, your two inch eyepiece in here, or if you have your 1.25 inch eyepiece, you can put that in here as well. Um, this is just, like I said, I think it's a 95% or 99% um, light diagonal, so you're gonna basically get the same view you would as if you're looking through the bottom of it. Um, this just again, this is just mostly for convenience. So you're not looking through the base of the telescope um, because obviously you don't want to be on your knees um, looking up through the telescope. So, anyways, that's that. Um, I'm gonna just close this back up here and put this back in here. Um, let's get to the main the main party here. We have the ED102 inside of this main box. Um, you're gonna see it comes with some uh, wrapped in plastic, and then I ripped mine off, but there's actually some white paper. Um, that's uh, around the telescope. So at an initial glance, I actually thought it was the non-carbon fiber version for a second and I was kind of alarmed, but um, on closer inspection, I found that it was just paper. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and just pull that out. You're gonna see that the there's a pad here for the base of the telescope. So I'm gonna just pull the whole thing out here. One second. And there we go, we have the telescope is removed from the box. There, and you can see that there's the two, two um, little half rings that it can sit on here. I'm going to take these out so we can take, set that our telescope on that. Move this box over here. So, I'm going to set this up and so we can get a better look at what we got going on here. So, um, yeah, again, this is just covering the base of the telescope, the um, two style focuser here that we have, and there she is. That's what you're getting in the box. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the plastic here when I set my phone down. Careful with this thing. It's it's heavier than you than you'd think it'd be. It's it's definitely lighter, obviously, than the aluminum version, but the carbon fiber version is still it's still pretty heavy. So um, just gotta be careful with that when you're working with this thing. So there it is. We'll get you a closer look here. And there it is, obviously a beautiful little instrument we got here. It says Explore Scientific, and then I think if we flip over to this side, yep, there it says ED-102 uh, Carbon Fiber. Uh, there we go, 714 millimeter focal length. So I think it's an F7, I believe. Um, it says there, triplet airspace apochromatic refractor. So there it is. Um, the first feature See if I can get my focus back here. Holy. The first feature you are going to notice um, with this is that this dew shield here at the front. Um, it looks really small here, the entire telescope at a glance, but you'll soon find that if we take, set my phone down here again, we'll flip this around actually. See if we can see it there. There it is. If you can actually extend this. Um, there's no there's no loosening knobs or anything going on there with that. You just pull it out um, manually by hand here. I'll just show you that here. This just slides 
pretty easily, you know, there's a little bit of a stick there, some sort of like foam padding, um, I think that keeps that in place, but I know that some guys have reported issues with that um, sliding around too much, maybe with some wear and tear, I mean, might start doing that, but um, overall for my scope, it does stay in place. Um, for me, you can see I'm pushing the, the scope, pushing and pulling the scope here by trying to move that. So it does take a little bit of work, which is good because you don't want it falling down. So um, yeah, the next thing you'll notice is that we have the two cradle rings here. And these are great. This is a great little piece on these. This is, I just love the, how easy these are, easily these are removed. With these two little knobs here you have on this side. These you just kind of unscrew. If you want to remove this, uh, you want to remove these cradle rings, which I'm going to do just to show a little bit more about what these got going on. So you unscrew these and then they just kind of flop over. There you go. We have them released and we can go ahead and remove the cradle rings from the scope here. So yeah, there they are. And what's really neat about this, these cradle rings is that they have the slit running down the carrying handle. And that's useful for if you're wanting to mount um, a non-conventional a non finder scope, if you want to mount it up here with some with some thumb screws. That's what I actually did with my ZWO 60 millimeter finder scope. Um, and it works great, so. We have the Vixen style dovetail here on the bottom, you can see. So fits with most standard uh, mounts. So that's gonna be great, that works great. Um, there's some nice little foam padding in here to um, protect from any damage, any scratches on the scope. So now we're just bound down to our bare bones scope. <coughs> here we have the finder base. Um, the thing about this base is it's a little tricky. You'll notice it's pretty narrow. This base is actually a proprietary base that's made for just the Explorer Scientific and Mi 8 style finder scopes. And so if you're wanting to mount any sort of other finder scope on this refracting telescope, you need to buy, I think it's like a $25 adapter um, that you can put in there that converts this into a wider area so that you can mount um, more of your traditional <coughs> finder or guide scopes on there. But like I said, there are um, options with this, as I said with the ZWO 60 millimeter that I was able to mount with some, uh, I think it was quarter inch by uh, 20 one inch long screws. So um, with socket capped screws, so I got those to fit in there and mount my guide scope on top of there. But um, if you're going to use this, you're going to have to buy an adapter unless you're using an Explore Scientific finder scope or guide scope or a MIAD style. So um, unique decision there by Explore Scientific to do that, but um, yeah, I think it, it it gets the job done. It's pretty nice. These I think people are pretty happy about these screws here um, that they have, and so um, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. And then here we have the um, two-speed focuser. You can see we have the coarse kind of large uh, focusing handle here. So this one will do the same thing here on this side, the bigger one. Uh, pulling the scope in and out. Make sure when you get the scope that you're tightening up these screws. Otherwise you'll notice this comes out very easily and you don't want it to do that because it actually is so easy that gravity will actually just pull it down um, if you get the scope at an angle. So you gotta make sure those tighten those screws when you get this uh, in the mail so that you're not dealing with that. Um, and then obviously with the smaller one we have a finer focus here. You can see that it um, moves it in, in and out a little bit slower. So if you're looking to really tune in your <coughs> tune in your focus. so. Um, yeah, I think that's, we'll take this look peek in here, but um, yeah, this is just the two inch style. Um, there's no threads in here. This is just gonna be a collapsing, use these screws to collapse around it. So um, that works great though. Um, kind of very, very easy to plug and play with that. So um, we'll take a peek at the glass here, I guess. I'm gonna set this down. Oh, and the, um, you'll notice here that the, the lens obviously comes with the lens cap. You want to keep that glass safe. And so um, you'll just pop that off, and there you go. You have your three pieces of glass in there for your, uh, for your telescope EMD coatings. Um, yeah, so a really great product. Um, I haven't actually got out to use it yet because, as you know, with telescopes, anytime you get a new telescope, it gets cloudy. So, um, But I'm really looking forward to getting out and using this thing, and I hope this helps anyone who's excited for for their Explore Scientific or just trying to learn a little bit more about their scope. Um, yeah, I hope this helps you and uh, thanks for watching.